William Contreras is a brewer, and maybe this is the fleece of the year as far as trades go. Matt Arnold really showed his muscle in a three-team deal that sends Sean Murphy to the Atlanta Braves, Esther Uri Ruiz to the Oakland A's, and the Brewers receiving two right-handed relievers and the main centerpiece of the deal, William Contreras. Let's talk about what exactly is going on with William Contreras and the player the Brewers are getting. I'm Dominic Catronio. I'm the host of Brewers Extra Innings during the regular season and Brewers Weekly on 620 WTMJ, your home for the Milwaukee Brewers in 2023. Let's start looking to the future and let's talk about William Contreras. In this video, I'm going to go over three things that the Brewers love about William Contreras and three things they're going to be looking to work on or try to improve during his tenure here in Milwaukee. Let's get started. Number one, William Contreras immediately fills maybe the most important need for the Brewers this offseason. Find offense behind the plate. And there's more layers to this as well. Specifically, though, at the catching position. Ever since Omar Narvaez, the primary catcher for the Brewers, had his all-star game in 2021, he is in the bottom quarter as far as production as a catcher offensively. Remember, he was signed as an offensive catcher with the thought that, hey, they can improve his defense as long as the offense remains there. And that has not been the case, which also leads to the reason why the Brewers are letting Omar Narvaez walk into free agency. Brewers catchers last season, when you compare it to the rest of the league, had a 78 WRC+. plus. That was only 19th of all catching cores in baseball. Furthermore, their 246 batting average on balls in play was 5th worst in all of baseball, 2nd worst in the National League. But how does Contreras help out the catching court? The numbers speak for themselves. A 278 hitter as a 24-year-old. A 354 on base? A 506 slugging? As a catcher? This is great stuff. I know he played a lot of games as a DH last year, but he is going to be looked to as a half-and-half, half, probably majority as a catcher, and still being available to DH on days that he's not going to catch. The last time the Brewers had a catcher this young projected to play as much as he's going to play, it hasn't been since 2011-2012 with Martin Maldonado and Jonathan Lucroy. They were both 25 years old. As Contreras is entering his age 25 season, his birthday is on Christmas Eve. Regardless of his performance defensively, this adds so much offense from a spot that the Brewers were seriously lacking for the last season and a half or so. Let's talk about the first thing the Brewers are going to work on with William Contreras. Number one for me is figure out what's going on with his swing rate. He doesn't chase a lot of pitches. He's pretty much league average when it comes to that. But he swings and misses a lot, meaning he's swinging and missing at strikes. You look at his swing rate, he swings less than league average, but he still whiffs way more than league average. That means he's just swinging and missing at strikes, as proven by his in-zone whiff rate. But really, though, it's not that far off from Hunter Renfro. Granted, Renfro's numbers are a little bit better. He's a more experienced player. But this is something the Brewers are going to identify and saying, hey, let's start attacking some more strikes. Because you know what a strike in a ball is. You don't chase pitches all that often, but you're swinging and missing a lot. Maybe the batter's eye is going to help him out here in Milwaukee. Let's talk about the second thing that I like about Wilson Contreras that he brings here to the Brewers. His performance against lefties. The Brewers are one of the worst teams in baseball against left-handed starters last season. You look at the slash line, 222 batting average, a 309 on base, a 365 slugging, and a 674 OPS against left-handed pitchers. All four numbers in the bottom 10 of the league. When you look at teams that finished 500 or better in the regular season, there are only two teams that had a worse record against left-handed starters than the Brewers. That would be the Toronto Blue Jays and the Chicago White Sox. Granted, the Brewers still finished above 500 against lefties, but for a team that had so much right-handed power, they could not figure it out against Southpaws. This is where William comes in. His numbers are insane against left-handed pitching. A 187 weighted runs created plus that's seventh best among players with at least 100 plate appearances against left-handed pitching last year. The leaderboard has some serious names on this as well. His batting average at 354, an OPS over 1,000. Here is your guy that maybe is going to play every day when a lefty's in there. Maybe he serves as the designated hitter, and Victor Caratini gets the start behind the plate. His bat is going to be in there against lefties. Now to the second thing the Brewers are going to be identifying and working on with William Contreras. This might be jumping the gun a little bit in my eyes, but when you look at his hard hit rates and his average exit velocity, to the naked eye, it looks really good. But when you dive a little bit deeper, you notice something a little troubling. His launch angle is very, very low. He has a solid barrel rate per plate appearance, 8.2. That's in the top half of the league as well. But when you look at his average launch angle, only at 6.1 degrees, only Vladimir Guerrero Jr., 
has a lower average launch angle. And he had a weird season this year where he didn't hit for nearly as much power, but you look at the batted ball numbers, you're thinking, wow, how did he not hit for so many more home runs? Part of the reason is ground balls are always hit harder than fly balls are. When you get backspin, of course, you're getting more launch. The ball is going to travel farther, but generally a few miles off of it versus a ground ball. And with Contreras, his ground ball rate has increased year over year, higher than league average, from 48% in 21 to 53% here in the 2022 season. If that sounds familiar, look at Christian Yelich. Similar hard hit rates, similar barrel numbers, but the average launch angle very, very low. Just something to keep an eye on to make sure that Contreras can get the ball in the air in a very hitter-friendly environment at American Family Field. And the third thing I love about this deal for the Brewers, I've already kind of touched on it. It's the fact that he's under team control through 2027. He's not even going to be arbitration eligible until 2025. There's a chance he could be a Super 2 in arbitration, meaning his service time, assuming he plays this entire season for the Brewers. There's a chance he'll be eligible to get to arbitration a year sooner. But the other thing is, if he performs like the Brewers think he's going to perform, he'll be eligible for the arbitration bonus pool for the top 125 players that aren't in arbitration yet. So he'll get a little bit of a bonus there. That doesn't cost the Brewers anything as well. And for Contreras, it's not like there's a massive rush for him to be the only guy. Even Jefferson Caro, who's only 20 years old and still in high A, he was just in the Arizona Fall League for the Brewers, there is still catching in this organization the Brewers can be excited about if the defense doesn't pan out. Which leads me to my third point that the Brewers are excited to work on with William Contreras. The framing and defense. Matt Arnold talked about it in his introductory press conference that the Brewers have a great track record as far as developing catchers into better defenders and better pitch framers. Obviously, the pitching staff certainly helps with that. But you look at the framing numbers last season for William Contreras. According to StatCast, he lost three runs in framing alone. That's 45th out of 60 qualified catchers. When you want to look at the latest success story, Victor Caratini, who was signed practically on opening day last year, improved his numbers from a negative three in 2021 to a plus one in 2022. The sauce is real with Charlie Green and Walker McKinvin in the Brewers locker room. And he knows what it's like to catch an elite staff. Max Free, Charlie Morton, the guys down in Atlanta. It's not like he's a stranger to being able to handle these major staffs. Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Freddie Peralta still on the roster and still plenty to be excited about. And an underrated fact is you have a normal offseason here in 2023. Yes, there's the World Baseball Classic, but no lockout to worry about. They can be in touch with the coaches all offseason long. This is something that will help his development and will only get better moving forward over the life of his time as a Milwaukee Brewer. All in all, I love this deal for Milwaukee. You give up Este Uri Ruiz for three great players and arguably the second best player available in the deal in William Contreras. If you want to learn more about the two other guys that Brewers acquired in this trade, Yoel Piamps and Justin Yeager, I have them in an attached video right here. We have plenty more content coming here on WTMJ throughout the season. Keep it locked. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter at Dom underscore Catronio. And make sure you follow our radio station, 620 WTMJ, for all the news, sports, and entertainment you need to know here for Wisconsin's radio station. Thanks for watching. Keep on swinging.